Hello, everyone. It is uh, me, Jer Gaming here, and welcome <laughs> to uh, the Splatoon 3 Direct Reaction. Now, I think you might have noticed that I have no fancy thing that just caught up at the beginning. There's no fade in, there's no blackout thing. Or at least I believe there isn't. The reason why is because, since because this is a reaction, I just thought that it'd be best to just upload this completely raw. So everything that I am doing, everything that's happening in this video is completely raw. My reaction, my everything, and all the types of stuff. Um, number two, another reason is just because everyone already did it. So I just want to get this out of the way as soon as possible. And all that types of stuff. Number three, um, you can probably tell I just woke up. Uh, just about 30 minutes ago, I finally got out of bed. And now I'm here trying to get a reaction video going on. So, you know. Um, yeah. So, uh, with that out of the way, let's just get right into this as quickly as possible since everyone already did this before me. And let me actually adjust this. There we go, so my hair doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. Anyways, this is the Splatoon 3 Direct for the Nintendo Switch. Which is a little surprising because that confirms that we will be... Um, playing on the Nintendo Switch. I mean, I'm, I know everyone already knew that, but now we could just confirm, confirm that this is exactly what we're doing. So, I'm going to try to not pause during the entire thing. I'm going to try to give out my everything I have to say at the end of the video. So, hopefully, you know. Anyways, three, two, one. Let's go. Squid Research Labs, Platoon 3, Research Report Presentation. Wow, it's been a while since I've seen that. I can't wait to play in Arizona. This is going to be so cool. <laughs> this is Splatsville, in the heart what? of the Splatlands. Like Smashville? Despite its old-fashioned appearance, it's seen enormous growth in recent years. It's also the hottest new place for inklings looking for things to do. Really now? Oh, hello everyone. Hope you're all staying fresh. I almost forgot about introductions. We're the researchers from the Squid Wait, Research Wait, do I see lab. jellyfish in the back at a lower frame rate? Fascinated by what these inklings can do. They can splat ink in kit form and smoothly swim through it in swim form. Yeah. We've been studying their basics. biology day and night. Yeah, yeah, we got the basics down. Today, this we'd like sound to relatively the same they did in Splatoon 2. While providing summaries throughout. There's that Inkzuka. I think of that course, one of my friends have been super hyped about. applies to the Octolings. We're sure of it. First, Turf War. Also, um, yeah, Splash Up Pros in here, so that's pretty cool. Weapons. Also, naturally, in a place called Splatsville, it just occurred to me that I'm pretty sure this is the first time I'm doing any sort of reaction to Splatoon 3, so, well, I guess other than the reveal, other than that, you know, I have seen the, uh, other videos related to Splatoon 3, so don't worry, I'm a little caught up. Or get sneaky and hide an ink to splat opponents. Mm -hmm. The more ink you spread, the bigger the advantage you'll have in battles. Whoops. If you're out of ink, submerge in it to refill. New techniques like the squid surge to swim up walls in a single burst. And Ooh. the squid roll to jump out of ink while yeah, so that's the thing turning around that was very described. vaguely shown in the trailer. That admittedly is really cool. Oh, while it's glowing like this, the move also slightly repels ink from opponents. Oh, so it's actually invincible. Holy cow. We've discovered kind of where broken. these turf war battles will take place. Stages confirmed for the Splatlands include Scorch Gorge. Eel Tail Alley, Mincemeat Metalworks, Ooh. and Undertow Spillway. 
That's kind of cool. There seem to be other stages as well. Hagglefish Market. A pier filled to the bream with street vendors. The stuff here looks fishy, though. Actually, this looks really neat. Several stages from Greater uh, water stage. also return. Museum Del Foncino. Let's go. Battles here take place in the central courtyard let's, of this modern let's museum. Let's go. Museum is back. Take special note <laughs> of the rotating wall. Hammerhead Bridge. This bridge connects Greater Inkopolis to the Splatlands. After lots of construction work, it's finally open. Thanks oh! To the bridge, transit to and from Greater Inkopolis. Now we have less sunlight. Let's go. <laughs> Mahi Mahi Resort. It's back. A luxury resort in Greater Inkopolis. Let's go! Attention to the mahi Mahi! That was like one of my favorite stages off. just because of how wacky and like how it's a, it's a little pool place. area. How could so you not look at it? It's a pool platter. stage! Including the stages you see here. Oh, Wahoo World's, World's back. Oh, you absolute butthead. More stages will be added in free. Oh, <gasps> Flounder Heights! Oh, please. And a now, much more desert like But please, 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 please. Weapons. I love Flounder Heights so much. First, it appears that all the basic weapons from previous games will be available. Ooh, okay, so they're all coming back. On top of that, Splatland specific weapon types, such as the bow like stringers, will make their destructive debut. We've also verified a new weapon type called the heck is that? Splatanas. The frick is a Splatana. This is the Splatana Wiper. Send blades of ink flying with the centrifugal force generated by swinging. So it's a sword? Swing after charging up a bit, and it'll transform into a charged slash. It's a sword. As expected, it's a literally a sword. Range attack. The is it? charged slash at close range is also quite devastating. It's literally just a sword. What the Let's heck? Let's dive into the weapons that can help you claim even more turf. Uh -huh. Special weapons. The crab. As the name implies, these are special kinds of weapons that can be unleashed after filling up the gauge from inking turf. There are some new types we've identified, so let's take a closer look. That actually looks like a really cool special. This is the Tactic Cooler. When it's activated, a fridge appears. You'll find in-game beverages stored inside. These have a variety of effects, like momentarily increasing speed. They come in packs of four. So take one and share the rest with your teammates. This is the Wave Breaker. When activated, it'll unleash waves around the area. It'll also mark an opponent's location and cause damage. Oh! Try to avoid them with a well-timed jump. Yeah, good luck with that. Finally, Constantly going up slants and stuff. Build up power, <gasps> then charge it's into a shark! a good splat. Once the attack ends, it'll explode and damage the surrounding area. Familiar special weapons like the Tenta missiles, Ink Jet, Ink Storm. Oh, it's back. Please be good again. Please, Ultra, or not Ultra Step, please. Oh, please, it's back. I'm, I'm, I'm both happy and a little mad just because of Special weapons Kensa 52 ruined it, weapons. but I love Booyah Bomb. That suits your oh, <gasps> Sprinkler and the Tender Missiles are a Splat bro. Oh, please. Please Splat Brella be good again. Shop here to get your tentacles on some fresh weapons. This I'm glad Inkstorm's back though. I actually really liked owned it. Owned by the chatty horseshoe crab, Sheldon. The locals have praised him for his wealth of weapon wisdom and sophisticated Also, I see that the shop system is different here. We're doing tickets now? Instead Sheldon of tickets? Instead of in-game currency for purchases, you'll need these Sheldon licenses. Obtain them by leveling up through battles and by consistently using the same weapons. One Sheldon license can be exchanged for one weapon that corresponds to your level. Ugh! More things oh, to have useless materials us, over. If you exchange more Sheldon licenses than normal, it appears he'll give you a weapon you like sooner than expected as a special reward. Oh. Huh. Huh. 
By the way, hmm. maybe, maybe the it's not that bad. Oh, no. walking around town are pretty savvy about their fashion. Wow. Things like headgear. Clothing, They're more alive. Shoot, the one with the rock, paper, scissors, like that comet says right there. Um, what is it? Them gossiping, laughing at someone in the back. In the That's kind of cute. Each one is managed by an interesting shopkeeper. So let's drop in. This is not couture, a headgear shop. You'll find an array of hats, masks, and glasses. What is it with headgear head manage or store managers always looking so dead in the, the inside? Nautilus, or emo? Eddie, and the or am, am I? Nails. Is it not that they're emo? The it's that they just look so dead inside. This Other than Flo- Ah, I don't know, Flo no, seems dead inside if you ask me. It specializes in Sure, tops, okay, another jellyfish-like creature. Always taking care of the shirts. The shopkeeper, Jell Lafleur, might be a touch archaic with words, but this jellyfish has a keen eye for fashion sense. Really? And finally, the shoe store crush station. That's a big old lobster. Cool kicks here, from sneakers <laughs> to sandals, a... and even leather. That's a way. big old lobster. I should probably turn it's up my volume, actually. Of, uh... He might look intimidating, but deep down, he's a nice guy. Is he? Probably. Probably. <laughs> So as evil? You're more than welcome to pick out gear based on its appearance. But they do come with abilities that can help you out in battle. Really now. Take run speed up, for example. Oh yeah. It can increase <laughs> your running speed. Now, how much of or that was equipped? Intensify action. This improves the squid roll and squid surge moves. There are even more abilities to discover. Plus, there's a fellow in Splatsville who can swap one ability with another. Who the frick is that? Is that to merch a... here, and you can add an ability of your choosing to your favorite gear. Wow. He's actually grown up. What the frick? And what if about you Spike? Your favorite gear Did he grow up? Fresh as fits, you can change in a flash. Also, the fact that you can change primary abilities? No, that's actually really cool. Simply that means we don't have to constantly go through the shop, just grind out. Uh, or not grind out, but constantly wait for whatever Welcome gear ability we want for the shop, or through someone else, which is what I did for my uh, Special Forces Barrette. I just realized, is that back in this game? Aren't the only things that happen here. You can also square off in anarchy battles. Anarchy battles. for rankings. Hold the active zones in Also, zones. it says something about win five instead of ten. Ride the tower to the goal in tower control. Oh. Carry the rainmaker to its. Actually, I I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on. This is the. I promise you, this is the one time I'm doing this. Win five and try and lose three, and you're out. Wait, what? Wait, so is this one of those, is this like, is this almost exactly how Splatoon 2 worked, except it's just a lot more, you know, front with you, that, um, you know, when you, like, there was that meter thing, right, and when you lose a certain amount, which I think was like six, you would get a cracked bar and it would just send you back to if you're in the okay line or just you just rank down. So I wonder if this is like that, but they're being a lot more front with you. That is exactly like that. Then if that's the case, what about the uh, the point system right there where she's at a 146 points and she needs to get 200 more or she needs 200 to level up? I, I don't know. We'll probably figure out when the game launches. In tower control. Carry the Rainmaker to its destination in Rainmaker. Or checkpoints now. And throw clams to score in Clam Blitz. There's actually checkpoints now in Rainmaker, huh? In these four modes, which are on rotation. Want to take on a challenge solo? Select Anarchy Battle Series. But if you want to team up with friends, joining Anarchy Battle Open, Open is the way to go. Oh, one extreme battle. You can also play private battles online. Set battle modes and other options to your liking. 
Why not play with your favorite battle modes alongside friends? Ooh, this is interesting. The entire UI is... Information about... The entire UI isn't even, like, a separate, like, thing. It's, like, in the exact same place. Like, your character's still in the back. That's kind of cool, actually. So, what is it? It's kind of like... I don't, I don't want to make comparisons like this. It's a little bit like... The Left 4 Dead 2 lobbies. Literally everything happened in the main menu screen. Campaigns, friends with campaigns, mutations, all that extra stuff that, um, and whatnot. Everything that you wanted to do was in the main menu. And for this, it's that too. That's kind of cool. These game modes will be available soon on the game's official website. Also, the soundtrack. Now, let's talk about the features within the lobby. This is the test range. Ooh. Try out and get comfy with your weapons here. Hey, they Besides got the big dudes back for some reason. Wait, want. the big dudes are back. Great place to get all warmed up. Or the big, the big, the big things. Is, are the, is there gonna? Next up, ghosts. Online friends will appear as 3D holograms. Oh. Drop oh. in on friends in the midst of battle and play alongside Oh, them. that's pretty cool. Also, the fact also that you could be in the training room before you're in battle, that's pretty cool. Team. That's cool. You'll be able to see what your friends are up to. It appears that you can also call out to friends in the lobby and invite them for battles. Oh. Why not see these features for yourself? Oh, that's pretty cool. This is where you can view battle replays. It appears that it can somewhat recreate recent battles. Oh, better be more than somewhat. Fast forward. Or Bro, skip to a certain part. This is about to be every it's content creator's wet players. dream. Oh my goodness. Incredible. Not only can you rewatch battles as many times as you'd like, but there's even a share feature. We hope you'll use this handy tool to help you rank up. Rank up? Next, we'll analyze and discuss this space within the lobby. I'm at least glad the that they're like Here, quite. Find some they quite literally fixed every single problem they everyone, including me, had with Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 1. At least just from that. Like, now we can train before we get into battle, which, th th uh, that's that's huge. I don't care what you say, that's huge. And the fact that you can actually team up in Turf War, that's actually pretty cool. Like, that was the thing you could only do in League, ideally. And if you tried Steam or stream sniping each other in ranked battles. But, literally, that's, that's really cool. Like, that, that's really cool. I really like that. Fresh lockers. One is yours, and the others belong to players with whom... Hold the You'll phone. You'll find some fresh lockers. I am not a fan of that. What is that? That looks like a big old splat needle. What is that? Who, who, who is... Whose weapon is that? Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Get that sucker out of here. She ain't allowed in my lobbies. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> One is yours, and the others belong to players with whom you've recently played. Oh, really? That's pretty cool, actually. As you can see, you'll be able to place any acquired weapons, gear, and items to your liking. <laughs> Slap on some snazzy stickers and modify your locker's color. That's like This is cool. your space to express yourself. So customize it however you'd like to show off your signature splatting style. Oh, yes. Items can be obtained at Hotlantis, a general store on the edge of Splatsville. Items? Oh. Uh... The store manager vanishes quite often. So instead, it's run by an artist named Harmony. She used to be a regular customer here. It's got an outlandish assortment of items. Why not show the store some love? Am I crazy or does she look familiar? They're not like the previous characters familiar, but like features as well. Like we've when seen her somewhere start, else. These splash tags appear. They can be customized with a banner, badge, and title. Mm. 
Okay, so it's kind of what me and Kelp thought. Additionally, you can change the emotes your character performs when you win. Our emotes are now. Oh! <laughs> All of these can be obtained via the in-game catalog, no! which will be available at Hotlantis. By using points no! you can unlock various items. <laughs> no. Like <laughs> no. No. Following the game's launch, a new game Wow, they are really they actually high key look expect us to be playing this be for sure that long, which it's understandable. Each but, you know, so we're snatching up items that happen for a solid 2 yeah. years. There's still a lot of info to share, but I need to take a little breather here. All right. In the meantime, please turn your attention toward this. I'm totally breathing. Introducing Table Turf Battle! Lay out your cards for a dazzling deck duel! Ink different shapes with different cards! Charge up power, then unleash it all at once with a special attack. There are cards like this, and even ones like this, and there are over 150 cards to collect in game. So build your deck and send your rivals packing. She doesn't sound like she's breathing. Watsville locals eagerly await your challenge. Table turf battle. Every player will be gifted an in-game starter deck. I'm not a fan of cards oh, or stuff like I that, but I will, but that's actually kind of neat. There. That was Table Turf Battle, a 1v1 competitive card battle spin-off of Turf War. It appears you can play this at the Table Turf Battle Dojo in Splatsville. Be on the lookout for more details staff. about Table Turf Just Battle in the future. Staff. That's actually kind of cool. Now, I'm not a fan this. of it, but that's kind of cool. There it is. The Salmon Run. Next wave. And new music. Salmon Run is a simple job that requires four players to work together to collect power eggs from the Salmonids advancing on them. This part-time gig is rumored to be a little fishy, but it pays pretty well. By defeating particularly ferocious creatures called boss Salmonids, you can obtain valuable golden eggs. Mm -hmm. You'll need to collect and deliver plenty of golden eggs in order to complete this job. Wherever these people are that are doing this, they already have to fill actually a decent amount, like 21. Around, like, that used to be considered, like, one of the, like, the, the you were at, like, the so top, top if you had to consider that much. First up, the Slammin' Lid. It's a UFO. It needs barriers and protects Salmonids on the ground. It's a literal UFO. Get too close to it, and it'll attempt to crush you, so approach with caution. Oh, is that how you get rid of it? So, you have to bait it to... Slam. Next, the big shot. It fires heavy projectiles from a distance. Be prepared for powerful shock waves when they land. Uh oh. With new boss salmonids confirmed, make sure you're ready for an even more dangerous salmon run. You can use it for eggs. That's pretty cool. Emergency. This is one of the new King Salmonids. Wow. It looks like they'll occasionally appear just before you complete the job. So there's a boss battle every the now and then? The back is a specially provided egg cannon. And it appears that you can fire golden eggs to deal massive damage. Oh. However, these battles are under a time limit. Tank! Rack up as much That's literally what it is. To drive them back. Ooh. Wait, are they playing on Wahoo World? This, this is the still being researched big run. We believe this is when Salmonids invade the city in which Icklings and Octolings live. Oh. It appears that this event happens once every few months. So brace yourselves! Big Run is coming! Whoever is the announcer is really getting into it. Okay. That's actually kind of cool. I'm not going to front. That's really cool. The, like, so basically, there is a, what may be like a coin flip of a chance. And you'll only notice through 
audio cues, or at least the sound effects of the usual sounding a lot more different distorted, and the whole emergency text, then you'll know there's a boss battle coming. That's actually pretty cool. That makes Salmon Run a lot more engaging, or exciting, and hype. So, that's actually pretty neat. Not gonna lie. That's really, really neat. Um, yeah, and then the whole big run thing, where occasionally they'll actually pop in said stages that you played before, like them in Wahoo World. That was actually really cool. Can't wait. Now, observe this manhole in Splatsville Square. Manhole. This is actually the entrance to the home of the Octarians, the so Inklings' longtime enemies. As Agent 3, the newest recruit of the new Squidbeak Splatoon, you'll do battle with the Octarian army, whose members are covered in hair for some reason. Along with your buddy Small Fry, you'll explore many stages, each one full of twists and turns. Oh. Oh, I almost forgot. Story mode is perfect for getting familiar with inking turf and using weapons. So, so new players might want to try it out. This looks a lot more like Octo Expansion than just story mode. Well, we've come this far. Maybe it's just because of the, the, inklings the dark theme. In the end. We hope you can witness the epic finale of this Splatastic Saga. Ooh. She's got a naked! Oh my gosh! We're back in Splatsville <laughs> from here on out. We'd like to talk about other features that'll help you enjoy your splatting escapades even more in the Splatoon 3 game. She got a Nike. Oh my gosh. You can post gosh. illustrations here via this mailbox. They'll be displayed all across the city and even in stages. So put on your artist cap and post away. I still don't Vertical understand how people draw in will also be supported. This. That's nice. Additionally, you can grab food and drinks that'll help you in battles at the concession stand. Well, Alright, hold on. What are we looking at? What are we looking at? Let's see, let's see. So, back then, there was an update that introduced like a triple, like a triple thing, right? Um, I see six. I only saw a single and a double, like, boost. So here I am seeing a coin boost with squids on it, and a level up boost with squids on it. So what does that do? Does that increase another very specific thing, I'm assuming? So, that means, just from looking at this... What, oh, no! There's a... There's, there's three coins on that. Does that mean there's a triple coin boost and not a triple level up boost? That's interesting. So then, what are coins used for then? Since getting weapons is a lot more different than, um, you know... Stand. Or use local communication to play with nearby folks in your favorite modes at the Shoal. I'm only going to use that By with my sister. By using photo That's mode, it. you can snap selfies, send photos to a smart device, or display them in your locker. Very rarely am I going to use that in my thumbnails. Although I will admit, that's really neat that we could do that. I think it'll, I mean, I doubt we can even use that in in-game, you know, like maybe in the story mode or something. If we could use it in the story mode, I got perfect thumbnail shots right there. But, um, yeah, that's, that's still pretty neat. This is the Recon Guide. Select your favorite stages at any time and take a stroll around them. Finally. Why not get familiar with each stage prior to battles? This is Splatnet 3. You can use this with your smart device. Freshest hits or freshest fits. It contains fits. features like checking your latest battle stats and ordering special in-game gear not sold in mm -hmm. shops from the Splatnet gear shop. But that's not all. Access features like Krusty Sean's Wonder Crust. Support this fellow's journey using ink points earned depending on the areas you inked during battles. Aww, <laughs> that's kind of cool. Or view history to take a trip down memory lane with All-time best badges. Fave weapons. You can also snag special wallpapers and more for your. I can't wait to see the fave weapons just display all three Splatoon pros if there even is going to be all three. <laughs> that's gonna be goofy. Smart device, so be sure to grab them. It appears that Splatnet 3 will be available at launch via the Nintendo Switch Online mobile app. 
as expected. Next up, Amiibo figures. Scan Splatoon series Amiibo at this spot in Splatsville, and voila! Saving your favorite gear combinations as fresh as fits will allow you to easily swap outfits. Additionally, it seems you'll be able to get special gear and even snap photos together with Amiibo. And Splatoon 3 Amiibo incoming! The little buddy. <gasps> Release is scheduled for this holiday. Small fry. I just realized that means... What is it? I have two Inkling Amiibos and I use them for Smash. So that means if I want to momentarily use them for Splatoon, I have to actually get rid of the data there. So I have to use, I have to resort to the Pearl Marina one. <laughs> or I have to get more old ones. Now, let's talk about post-launch updates. As we mentioned a while ago, Following the game's launch, a new in-game catalog will be released every three months for two years. Oh, it's the Explosion Remaker again, new rather than will Tornado. New be added around the same time as each catalog. Like what? Oh, updates? In addition, oh, never mind. X Battle, available after attaining an extremely high rank in Anarchy Battle. Mm-hmm. And League Battle, where every two hours you can compete in teams based on your Anarchy Battle results every are planned two. to be added in future updates. Oh, so this is not going to be in game, base game. We're planning to add large-scale paid DLC. What's that? More details will come at a later time, so please be on the lookout. And now, I'd like to wrap up this research report from the Squid Research Lab. Thank you for watching. With what? I like that we have a uh, a checkpoint system. Huh? Who are you supposed to be? Stop right there. I heard that. I heard that air. I heard that air horn noise. Stop right there. You're. L let me explain. You know why you guys do so bad at being with this generation? It's because you're a AAA company. By default, you are not with this generation. Okay? Don't do that again. Just like the dabbing. Don't do that again. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear it. Don't do that again. I'm assuming these are the new idols. The deep cut. Squid, I completely forgot to tell you about Deep Cut. They're an incredibly popular trio who hosts the Splatsville news program, Anarchy Splatcast. They provide information on battle stages, as well as other news bulletins. Wait, listen to Splatcast? What does that mean? So... I'm just saying, there better be a feature where we can skip this. You didn't introduce in Splatoon 2. It's been five years now. And that's the number one thing a lot of us demanded. Let us skip this. While we're on the subject, the youngsters of Splatsville own sea cucumber phones. They can check the news while doing other activities, as shown here. Oh. Oh, and... that's pretty cool. <gasps> oh, wait! That means... That means when rotations change... We won't even have to... Like, okay. Um... I don't know if this will happen, but... When Samurai opened... 
what would happen is that you would have to rewatch the news again. So there was actually a time where you could hop right into the thing just a minute before it rotated. Then it rotates. Then you have to watch it again because Sam Run opened. So hopefully with this feature, that will not happen ever again. Because that was one of the most frustrating things about Splatoon 2. Hopefully. Oh my gosh. Alright, this is kind of cool. Not Japanese vibe. I want to say it's got the Chinese vibe to it. It's got a bit of a Chinese vibe to it. I don't, I don't know. If that's. I'm a Chinese myself, but I'm I'm not exactly one million percent sure that's part of Asian culture to have this sort of like thing where they. I don't know how to describe it, but th it feels like it. This has an Asian vibe to it. I'm kind of digging it. Okay. 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 They're actually, uh, what is it? It's been confirmed that Splatfest will make a return. In these events, you pick a team based on the announced theme, then- Oh my gosh, she's doing the Macarena! <laughs> and this time around, there will be three teams to choose from. Oh! Wow! That's gonna make things a lot more complex. Um, but what was it? I said this- I never got to say anything about this, but... One of the things that I think made Ink Me Up, or whatever was the music Callie Marie sang better than what Pearl and Marina sang was that Pearl and Marina are so special that they're completely separate from each other it sometimes feels like they sing differently you know like there's a lot of parts where they sing by themselves like an entire like I don't know what's the song called they sing when you're in the lobby but the entire first half feels like it's owed to Marina and the no, the entire first half was O to Pearl, and the entire second half is O to Marina. That's what it feels like. This, on the other hand, feels like the first half is them singing separately, and the entire second half is them singing together. That, that, in my opinion, is the key to making good music when you have multiple singers. Occasionally, have them sing together in unison. Because that, in my opinion, or from my hearing, is not what happens very often with um, Splatoon 2's Splatfest music. So, the fact that they're doing this here, thank you. That is how you make enjoyable music. At least part of it. Splatfests consist of two halves. In the first half, teams will compete in 4v4 turf war battles. The second half is a tricolor turf war. Oh. It's a special mode where, whoa, three teams fight at the same time. How is that going to work? All players on the team currently in first place will start in the center of the stage. Two players each from the second and third place teams will attack the first place team from opposite ends of Oh, 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 I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. 
I get it. I thought this was about to be like an unfair system. No, I get it. I get it. They basically make it fair by making it unfair. <laughs> basically, the t the red team, the winning team, they get paired in groups. However, the two opposite teams, which is two, have to indirectly or directly work with the other team they were against just earlier to face the team that's winning. So basically, think of it like this. You're with a kid. You, and you don't like this kid only because he's on the other team. You're facing against his other team. You, the parent says, hey, this team is winning. And then you're with the other kid, right? You're just like, hey, I don't want to do this, but we may have to work together for just a little bit, you know? So that's what this mode is. It's actually, that's a, that's a little neat. That's a little neat. I don't know how fair that is still, but that's a little neat. I'll give them that. The stage. Can the leading team defend themselves? Likely. Or will the other two teams exact revenge and force them out? Unlikely. <laughs> Use the ultra signal to control the battle and contribute to the Splatfest while working alongside the members of Deep Cut. Is that a sprinkler? Like okay. a new sprinkler? We're going to close out this presentation with an announcement from Deep Cut. Take it away. The ultra signal. Okay. Also, correct me if I am wrong. Other than... Is Big Man supposed to be like the male? In the whole idol group, because I remember hearing about there was supposed to be a male in the idol group, and uh. Oh. Uh... There's supposed to be a male in the idol group, and it's a big man supposed to be that. Rock, paper, scissor. Okay, so there's actually gonna be a uh, a splatfest during that time. That's cool. I guess I'll probably might as well do the same thing I did with Splatoon 2, where I did it as a video. So that's really cool. I really like the music, I'm not gonna front it. The Splatfest music is actually really good. I I'm not- I, I'll, I will be front. I'm sort of not a fan of the idol group right now, with the exception of the blue one. But, I really am digging the music. all we have to share today or not and now announcing the splatoon 3 enter the splatlands invitational 2020 pax west this event will take place on september 5th at pax west ah oh, where the frick is pax Some west of the top finishers from this summer's splatoon 2 inkopolis showdown will head to seattle and compete in seattle North America's first ever splatoon 3 invitational Follow the official Nintendo vs. Twitter account for updates. And to see more of our research findings as we uncover them, follow the official Splatoon North American Twitter account. We hope you'll have an incredible time starting September 9th. Bye-bye! Wow. I forget what happens when Nintendo has a big game coming and they're like this close to releasing it. They're like, hey! Oh, this is gonna happen days right before the game. <laughs> it's really annoying how they tease us with something so soon and yet so fast. Anyways, that was actually really cool. I am excited, actually. <laughs> um, admittedly, it's been a bit since I did a Splatoon 2 video in general. 
and my interest of Splatoon have fell out quite a bit, but thanks to that, actually, I'm really excited, surprisingly. So, hopefully, that'll be as good as I hope, and, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm actually really excited. Mm. I, don't, I don't know if I have too much to say, but the one thing I'm a little bit uh, afraid of is the one thing I didn't like about Splatoon 2, and that was the coin system. It's not that the coin system was bad, it's that um, the more and more you got into the game, coins became irrelevant eventually. The only thing you used for coins was buying weapons, clothes, and scrubbing out gear, etc. But that was it. Eventually, coins were just obsolete. A lot of things that you want to do, like the things that were super expensive, like gear, was handled with seashells, and you could only get those by leveling up or doing Splatfest. And since Splatfest was limited time, and there are, or, or there are at least a lot of people that came to Splatoon 2 pretty late, that means that they would be at a, they would quite be at a disadvantage compared to people who played the game a lot during its time of its activity and stuff. So, my biggest concern is the possibility that um, coins would become irrelevant, and especially since now there's a license system where you have to get a license or more Sheldon license to go get a new weapon, kind of makes me afraid that coins might become even more relevant. So the only thing I could say is, what I will admit is that they didn't say anything about seashells or super seashells. Um, so my hope is that when you do re-rolling gear or any external thing with gear that gives you more chunks and whatnot, if that's a thing, I hope that is tied with coins. Or else, coins will become, eventually will become irrelevant in the long run. Because, and eventually, it's also because there's a lot of ways you can get coins. There's the level up ticket, there's that triple coin thing. Um, and sh Salmon Run, which I'm assuming will give you coins. And I will make the huge assumption that that turn-based turf war thing will give you coins. Huge assumption. But, yeah, that's the only micro other concern. Also, please, let us skip the news. For crying out loud, just let us skip it. But other than that, I'm actually kind of excited. I, from the Spot Fest music, I actually liked the music. Not to say that I didn't like Splatoon 2's music, but from this, I'm already getting a really strong first impression. Um, like I said before, Pearl and Marina, almost every single song they sang, almost felt like they'd never been in unison. Even in, like, the last second... Uh, you know, one minute left type of thing. It sort of felt like they were a little separate, you know? So, I'm kind of excited to see how they sing together here. Please be good. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited for what the weapons have to introduce. I'm going to make the assumption that they're introducing every single base weapon in the game. And then they're introducing all the rest of the variants later, which is what they did with Splatoon 2 as well. I think one of the first ones they did was like 40 Splatshot Pro, and then, you know, what the rest was history. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually excited. <laughs> actually pretty excited. So, yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this reaction. If you did, give it a like, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm pretty excited. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Take care. God bless you guys. Hopefully, I will spend as much time with Splatoon 3 as I did with Splatoon 2, which is almost 3,000 hours. And, um, yeah. Take care. God bless you. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Let me just... Uh